It is no secret that my favourite kind of music is early 70s glam rock. These are the records that made me love the power and joy of music. When most people think about glam, they see it as a British eccentricity with a few pale Australian imitators in its shadow. But there was one other scene where glam thrived and great records were made. While they were making spacey kraut rock, the Germans, tall, blonde, industrious neighbours, the Dutch, were having a much more joyous time of it with the vibrant glam and rock scene. Let's look at some of the major players on that scene and work up a playlist based on some of the more interesting acts. There are a number of Dutch acts who had worldwide hits in the early to mid 70s, best known as probably Shocking Blue, whose Venus is a rock standard, and an Australian and US number one hit. They had many other hits, including the B-side of Venus, Hot Sand, plus Mighty Joe and Never Marry a Railroad Man. Nirvana's first single, Love Buzz, was a Shocking Blue cover. The George Baker selection had major hits with Little Green Bag and Paloma Blanca, Little Green Bag most famous for its second life in the film Reservoir Dogs, acts like The Tea Set, My Bell Army, number 5 US, number 3 Australia, Pussycat, Mississippi sold 5 million copies, and Mouth and McNeil, How Do You Do, number 8 US, had all solid one-shot hits, whereas acts like Golden Earring with Radar Love and Focus, the frankly bonkers Hocus Pocus, built a more substantial following. But the ultimate Dutch rock and roll hero, to the Dutch themselves at least it would seem, was Herman Brood, a bit of a drug craze maniac whose band Wild Romance threatened to break into the UK and US markets on a number of occasions, only to be held back by typically drug crazed and maniacal behaviour by Brood. His signature song, Saturday Night, did make number 35 in the US in 1979, but his career could never get momentum outside of his Dutch audience. Eventually, he all but gave up music, preferring to concentrate his energies on a career as a successful painter and a less than successful drug addict. It all came to an end when he killed himself, with some flair it must be said, by jumping off the roof of the Amsterdam Hilton in 2001. Before we come to the jewels and the crown of what I have termed the Glamsterdam movement, even though these bands came from all of the major Dutch towns, mention should be made of what the Dutch call farmer's rock, which was played by groups in the ring of small provincial towns around the German and Belgian borders. These bands tended to play very straight ahead rock music with some local folk elements, but were marked by their frequently bawdy, surreal and jokey lyrics describing the minutiae of country life. They also tend to play outdoor venues in tents rather than formal concerts and much beer is traditionally drunk at their gigs. Sounds fun. Lemming, also known as The Lemmings and The Lemming, were an odd little band who fused glammy flair, a ludicrous sense of camp and a genuine gift for melody. As a rule of thumb, their work needs a remix because it's a little tepid in the low end, much like the early records of their immediate contemporaries, Kiss. And that's the closest point of reference to the unfamiliar, a sort of slightly inferior pre-destroyer kiss. Lucifera is a driving, tuneful rocker for the uninitiated to start with. BZN are legends of Glamsterdam, once having a run of at least one top 40 song for 26 consecutive years from 1973 to 1998, and at least one top 40 album on the charts from 1977 to 2008. 1973's Sweet Silver Annie, sung in English, really hit the mark for the Slade sweet sound that held the UK in such thrall that year. Talented and mysterious Cherry Van Gelder Smith had only one hit, the anthemic Silver Boy, which suited her Susie Quattro-esque voice to a T. Sung in English, the lyrics do sound a little clunky, which probably cost it on the English-speaking markets, but glam was never about the lyrics. Hubcap, Diamond Star, Halo, anyone? Was it? The single before Silver Boy, Goodbye Guitar Man, was excellent, much more a straightforward rocker. Cherry released her final single in 1981 and slipped into relative obscurity thereafter. Hans van Hemet is a triple threat artist, a songwriter with three Eurovision credits, including Mouth of Manil's How Do You Do, a Dutch Euro football championship and in 1988, a tournament 
the Netherlands won, and eight number one Dutch singles. A top hit making producer when he put his mind to it, and a bopping glamster with the best of them. 1973's Because of the Cats has that glammy bounce, a sort of a Tanks era T Rex to it, as well as a worthy tune. My big and consistent bugaboo with the Dutch scene at the time is the singing in English and how the lyrics provided just don't seem to make sense. And I'd rather they made no sense singing in a language I can't understand than in one I can. But again, it's glam. It's all about the crash and thump and nobody expects anything profound. Booby Trap with a vision of veteran pop eccentric Jan Rybrook, founded in 1971, who according to the story, wanted a band where he could make some money because he was sick of playing in bands and being broke all the time. He envisaged what he called a commercial Lou Reed sound and added he didn't want to sound anything like the sweet because they made him want to puke. Armed with a contract from one of Europe's biggest labels, Ariola, he went into the studio in 1974 and made this, let's not call it a rip-off, let's call it a homage to T-Rex, Kelly, Grace and Sally. This was the only record booby trap ever made. Rybrook really emerged around the turn of the century with a couple of albums but has seems to have slipped into rock and roll obscurity since then. Heart were in the mid 70s the pride of the Rotterdam scene. Their uber catchy love maker, which borrowed a guitar figure from T Rex as a get it on, ruling in its stompy sing shout long glory. Singer Patricia Pay was a veteran of the scene, and when she left to go solo in 1975, the band folded. Pye's first single was a cover of Bob Dylan's Can You Please Crawl Out Your Window, which is a somewhat outre choice for a Dylan cover. She made a major comeback, not that she ever really went anywhere, in 2011, reinventing herself as a gay icon, a relatively safe career move in the fourth most gay-identified nation in Europe. The wonderfully named Heavy Dwarves with Mooder Nature played a thudding Gary Glitter style glam and sang in Dutch. The song is almost a classic. It just needs a stronger hook. But there's the weird thing. It's the only thing this band, groovy name and all, ever released because the band, beyond its groovy name, never really existed. While Moda Nature is a legit rock song and some money has been spent producing it, the B-side is an ad for a bank, and the sleeve of the single has photos of various bank branches. It was a promotional item that kids got when they opened their first bank account. So as a fan of glam and of unfettered capitalism, I doubly endorse this record. Another band with a great name was Plastic Feet, who had their one shot with a cross between Slade and the Glitter Band on a song called Big Blonde Baby, which was a bigger hit in Belgium and Germany than it was at home. Not that it was much of a hit at home. Like all the best glam rock, it's an uplifting romp of no great consequence and the band disappeared as quickly and completely as it could once the record disappeared from memory. It just goes to show that for every Johan Cruyff that was shocking blue, there was a Winston Bogard. Of plastic feet. And speaking of Cruyff, at the dawning of his greatest fame in 1969, he actually released a single, a sort of a shouty affair backed by an umpapa band called Oi Oi Oi, and it was freaking horrible. So I'm sorry, Johan, you're probably the greatest footballer of your generation, but uh, as a pop singer, you left something to be desired. Zingara did a little better than many of their contemporaries in so much as they managed to make two singles, the last of which was the junk store raver Girl, Girl, Girl. In addition to the seemingly requisite glitter band stomp, there's a hint of a tune here which suggests potential. If they'd hired an English vocalist and a move to, I don't know, Hull or Tooting Beck, perhaps an appearance on Top of the Pops would have been forthcoming. The Dizzy Man's band were a very successful group. Their music is always fun and occasionally funny and silly, no more so than their unpicking of prog rock pretensions on their album The Opera. Dizzy on the Rocks has a sort of Slade meets Ziggy Stardust vibe to it, and it rocks like a violent wristwatch. Dutch glam started to wind down after 1974, when the Dutch government shut down the pirate radio stations, and public radio began to emphasise more middle-of-the-road acts like Pussycat and George Baker for young programming. So we close with a double from one of the central glories of Glamsterdam, Bobby Sinclair and Unit Gloria, 
with the prophetically titled The Rock Goes On with its flagrant Susie Quattroisms, although it does need to fade 30 seconds sooner, and the wonderful Clap Your Hands and Stamp Your Feet, which lent its name to a compilation album that features quite a few of the songs mentioned in the presentation, and which I cannot recommend enough. Bonnie, the Queen of Glamsterdam, is still active today after a 50 years career, plus covering every imaginable genre of music. And there we have it, a cross-section of the most vital, joyous, crazy music scenes of all of the decade. What's your favourite micro-genre? In the 70s, jazz thrived, for example, in Ethiopia and Zambia. Are there any Ethiopian jazz fans out there? Do let us know in the comments. Adorn that lonesome section with your wisdom. And until the next time we meet, be it on the broad, majestic highway of the stars or in the dim, smoky corners of those who also served, stay righteous, one and all. <laughs>